Hey guys, welcome back to As A Man Thinketh on Unasa TV. It's another fall day here in North Carolina. So last week I was censored when I, when I posted a video talking about the carbon pipelines that are going into Wyoming and of course the Summit Pipeline, which goes through about five states in, um, up in Iowa, uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota. In any case, they're using uh, eminent domain in a lot of those cases to be able to make these carbon pipelines work. Over the past month or so, you've heard me talk a lot about these, these big green energy movements where they have these transmission lines going across the United States and they're taking up farmland. There's been a lot of eminent domain cases. It's really sad. And then now you've got, I did a video the other day talking about how BLM is going to be taking land that has been traditionally used for grazing leases and turning it into solar fields to feed this massive power grid. But those aren't the only power land grabs that are going on right now. If you live in Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, or Minnesota, you've probably heard a lot of talk about carbon pipelines. Wyoming's a new one on that list. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, there's about a 400 mile long a natural gas line that they're wanting to convert into one of these carbon pipelines to pipe carbon and sequester it under the ground. Is this a good idea? Uh, environmentally speaking and sustainability speaking, I think it's a nutty idea. But there are some people who think it's a perfectly good idea and a perfectly safe idea. And I have a feeling I got censored in that video because I talked about the dangers of these carbon pipelines and what could actually happen with the carbon pipelines. These pipelines will have liquidized CO2, highly pressurized around 2000 PSI, and any natural or mechanical accident could cause a significant rupture, releasing an enormous cloud of CO2 over the surrounding landscape. There has already been significant failures of these systems, resulting in highly dangerous ruptures. For the residents of Sataria, Mississippi, this meant being gassed and poisoned in their own homes and communities. Anyway, that was a good video, guys. If you guys haven't watched it, go back and watch it. It's now monetized, finally, after about a week of bickering with YouTube. Point is, is that these carbon pipelines do pose a danger, not just to the landowners where the carbon pipelines are running through, but where they're sequestering the carbon into the ground. So ADM, Archer Daniels Millard Company, uh, has the first carbon sequestering project in the United States in the state of Illinois. And just a few days ago, the Environmental Protection Agency um, accused them of violating the Clean Water Drinking Act. So what has actually happened is that as they've been sequestering this carbon into the ground, which, I've, which I said in that video I thought was a bad idea to start with, um, and, they, and because you can't really control what's happening once it goes into the ground, they found that it was leaking out in some spots. Now, apparently ADM has been able to go in and cap uh, those areas where the leaks were, the, those are just the leaks that they know about. They're considering this, and as far as carbon sequestering, a, a model program. This is what's happening in the state of Illinois. And yet, they've, they're, as they're pushing this carbon under the ground, they've already had a leak. These things haven't been around for that long. I mean, we just got funding for this through the Biden-Harris administration not too long ago. So um, it hasn't even been an open facility operating for that long before we've already started to see this carbon starting to seep out in areas that they, they didn't foresee it seeping out into, getting into groundwater, contaminating things. Of course, they'll always say, to our knowledge, there is no contamination or, or nothing to worry about for anybody as far as groundwater is concerned. According to the ADM spokesperson, Jackie Anderson, at no time was there any impact to the surface or groundwater sources or any threat to public health. Although, like I said, the EPA has cited them for violation of the Clean Water Drinking Act. So there seems to be a difference of opinion there but it's leaking out and that's just the area that they've tested it in, just the area that they found it in. Now they do have things in place to alert them when there is a carbon leak, but how long that carbon leak has been there before you know, the systems are able to pick up on it, I don't know. The trade group for the carbon capture industry said that the incident showed that the monitoring system for CO2 injections was working. So uh, all of this has come from the Biden, the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, which uh, increase the price of carbon sequestering from uh, 50 
dollars per ton to 85 dollars per ton so it nearly doubled the price that these guys are getting for pushing carbon into the ground we've been seeing a lot of these eminent domain cases across the u.s and, we, and we're seeing this with power lines too and i'm going to do another video uh, kind of giving you an update on more eminent domain cases and cases that are impacting uh, power lines running through reservation land because reservation land is one of the easiest ones to take right they think that they own the land they think that they control the land you and i are told that they're sovereign entities but really the iba or bia B bureau of indian affairs uh, pretty much controls all of that land. So you have a bureaucracy, an agency, and all they have to do is, is sign off with the U.S. Forest Service Bureau of Land Management, um, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and they can run a pipeline, they can run transmission lines, they can run whatever they want to through Native American reservations. So you're gonna see a lot of these cases as this infrastructure builds out, all of this infrastructure being built up in the name of climate change, right? Because we have to save our climate. The Atlantic is cooling at an incredible rate. There was some sarcasm mixed in there. The point is, is that they've invested so much money into these projects that the people, that people are going out there and they're making big time bucks on this stuff. I mean, who's paying this? This is their big question I want all of you to ask for. Who's paying these guys to sequester the carbon? was coming in tax credits. Tax credits mean taxpayers are paying for them to put this carbon into the ground and, and literally pollute our environment and because that's what they're doing is they're, they're polluting. We just saw that with ADM's um, sequestering project. They can't control everywhere that carbon goes once it goes under the ground. I mean, you gotta think about those large holes under the ground as giant bladders with a bunch of holes in them. Carbon's gonna start seeping out all over the place. And it's good if you're in the fracking business because it's gonna start seeping out, pushing some of that oil out to where you can get to it with your fracking equipment. But it is not good for those of us who depend on groundwater, for those of us who depend on surface water if it makes it up to the surface. So anyway, guys, uh, stay tuned for more videos like this. This week has, the beginning of this week has had a couple short videos just because of the weather we're having here in North Carolina. I don't have an inside studio, so I, I do everything outside. Um, but I do have a special guest that's gonna be on here later this week. And we also have coming up on the channel in the month of October, we will be interviewing some uh, female producers who have started meat processing companies to hear a little more about their story, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and that's kind of our way of, of helping to celebrate um, Working Women's Month. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. But um, the, the video, I'm excited to have an interview Wednesday evening. It'll come out on Thursday. I'll be uh, speaking with a Vermont farmer whose farm has been sabotaged. It wouldn't surprise you that this Vermont farmer is located just outside of Lake uh, Champlain, which is the lake of subject when the EPA came into the state of Vermont. Um, and I did a video on this last week and they basically said, you know what, we're going to take away the regulatory authority of the agency of agriculture of the state of Vermont because they're not doing their job. According to Vermont Digger, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency is requiring Vermont to change the way it regulates some types of farms after an investigation showed that the state program was not complying with the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act passed in 1972 apparently gives the Environmental Protection Agency, a bureaucracy of the United States, the authority to come in and take away the rights of a state to govern its waters if it feels that the state is failing to do so. They said that currently there are two agencies which split re responsibility for regulating the farms. The Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets, and the Agency of Natural Resources. But that the system is, is causing problems because farmers aren't sure where to go or, or what, what regulations they're supposed to follow, et cetera, et cetera. I think number one, just thinking about this uh, off the top of my head, you have two very different agencies with two very different purposes. And when it comes to the state of Vermont, the Agency of Agriculture, so what they're actually responsible for, is to go in and handle pollution and runoff coming from fields. The Department of Environmental Conservation, on the other hand, handles you know, the runoff that's coming from certain barns, certain manure pits, etc. So if there is a failed policy, in my perspective, of you know, the Clean Water Act, the agency that has been in the past responsible for handling 
CAFOs, which would be these barns, manure pits, et cetera, that's, that's, that's kind of where a lot of this is going, that agency is the one that has failed. But yet the Biden administration's Environmental Protection Agency feels that they should hand all the control over to that agency. If you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest you watch that video ahead of my interview on Wednesday evening. Until next time, guys, stay safe. Real quick, I wanted to remind you to shop at Yanasa Trading Co. to support this channel. We have a lot of Defend the Right to Farm gear, the Defend the Right to Farm gear t-shirts, Defend the Right to Farm Ranch, all of that helps support not only this channel, but also our nonprofit. We also sell bison wool. Because of Bison Down's extreme ability to effectively manage moisture, odor-causing bacteria, bacteria don't have the moist environment they need to thrive. You can literally wear these socks for days. I have. We've gone hiking in our socks. The, the bison wool mixed with the merino wool is, is absolutely amazing. 20 miles, haven't washed these yet. They still smell like they're new out of the package. It is absolutely amazing. The best part is by buying bison wool products, you are adding value to our American ranchers raising bison and restoring native prairies and grasslands. That's how you can sequester carbon naturally. So shop at Yanas Trading Co. and support the channel.